So I just had to tap her a couple, good girl, had to tap her a couple of times there. I haven't asked for the backup and there's a whole queue when you get on. I just want to see if she drops her head. So what's important right here is that she breaks at the pole. That's got to happen and I'll explain why. Most of the time, or the main reason why your horse doesn't back up physically is because they're bracing against it. And it looks like this. She's not going to do it, but it looks like this. They park their nose way out. They get a U neck. They get tight through the top line and they plant their front feet. And you physically can't make a horse back up unless you use horrible amounts of force. Okay. So this is the first place we've got to start and change. First place has nothing to do with pulling. We're not here to pull. And we're here to break that habit in you and to recreate a new pattern of contact and responsiveness in your horse. So wouldn't we all, Jojo, wouldn't we all like our horses that when we pick up the rein, that she what? Breaks at the pole and softens into the contact and actually creates her own loose rein. Isn't that nice? And then we want to be able to take that back to into the backup. Good girl. And keep that level of softness in her top line, including her pole and shoulder. You can let him have it. Let him have it. Go after him. Mm-hmm. Look, son, you're photobombing. Going out. I know you're in here because you miss me, but this is too much. Go on, baby. Adds a little spice here for the camera. So let's talk about that one more time. What are we looking to do? Break the tension and resistance in the horse's pole and in their shoulder. If you don't break this, the top line will not soften and allow the horse to properly and correctly come underneath themselves, sit back and get off their front end and back up. So if your horse is here all the time, this has to break at the pole and right soon as the horse breaks at the pole behind the ears, you do it in your body and you can feel your shoulders open up. Now that helps the horse reposition their body weight and be in the correct physical posture and position to sit back and back up with their hind end, get off their front end, collect up and round themselves, not to mention none of that will happen if they don't open up their top line shoes with this and their trust could be broken just simply by being a lesson horse and having so many different riders with unforgiving unfeeling hands in their mouth and they're just they're done and they just want to get out of here and now you've acquired this horse and you've got to work through some of those issues so again I'm gonna test it by being light she might be sleeping so I might cluck a little I could see her eyes starting to close. So it's cool too, because when they trust you, they get real relaxed with this. So it's so full circle, you guys, it, it, I love it. I'm sorry, I love my method because it's for every horse, no matter what their experience is, their age, their breed, it works for every horse. And it trains you to start to read the horse and understand what that horse needs at that moment. That's the beauty because they all go through the same techniques and exercises in my training pyramid, but each horse is an individual as we know. So we have to learn what that horse needs to, to best learn what our approach needs to be. Good girl. Yes, my sweetie. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to do again is work on the backup. Because if you don't have the horse accepting of contact, meaning they're freaking out, they feel very vulnerable, they're claustrophobic, nothing's going to work. Nothing's going to work. So let's get this horse at least starting to think about your hands, listen to your hands, connect with your hands, understand the cue of the backup. First, we want the horse to just respond to that contact. I'm not looking for them to break at the pole yet. Mm -mm -mm -mm, won't happen. I'm just looking for her to what? Move back when she feels this on her nose, especially. Okay, not the pole, but her nose. Good girl. And if she doesn't, I will add on rhythmically, add on. And I might only need a couple of add-ons. And if she doesn't feel it or hear it, I might get stronger with my add-on. Until what? I get the response I'm looking for. Back off with the add-on and stay with your hands.
keep asking with your hands until she can just or he can just back up with your hands. Remember, this tool is just to help her or him learn from you. You don't want to teach him with this. This is just a helper, an add-on as I like to call it. Good girl. Just like your clucking's an add-on. You have lots of things to help the horse focus in on becoming connected and responsive to you, your contact, your hands, your touch, your body, whatever you want to teach them. Okay, so once your backup's pretty responsive, you want three steps. One, two, three, good. Just bring up your energy a little bit more. You can practice that too. Good girl, lots of praise. Take your time. Positive reinforcement is key. Change their association with this so it's enjoyable. Learning isn't always enjoyable for either one of us. So do your best to add the joy in the relationship. So once you've got your back up, the next thing we're gonna work on, because that's working really well. Now, it may not work well the first session. This might take three days three sessions I call it because you can't always have three days um, in a row it might take two weeks honestly you guys because you're learning you're feeling timing and what works best for that horse and you don't know what might trigger your horse this this might really trigger your horse because it's a claustrophobic thing remember and it's all about trust and you don't always know what their experiences have been so don't get worried if it takes a long time. You can always ask me questions in the comments area, the Q&A. So once your backup is three good, consistent, rhythmic steps back, three good ones, and you can, thank you, baby girl, and you can go pretty light with just your fingers, not gripping. You might have to start there, but just a light touch with your fingers. You're going to work on the other two areas. And the other two are the vertical flexion and the lateral flexion. First, we're going to work on lateral, side to side. That's always easier than vertical. So what we want to do with the lateral is now work on the pull. So the backup worked on the nose and teaching your horse to accept this claustrophobic feeling, to respond to pressure and contact on the nose, which means to stop, especially when you go to ride or back up, and to feel safe with that and not panic. That's key. Now we're going to work on the pole area and we're going to start with the easiest which is side to side. <clears throat> Again I'm holding my whip like this and I'm going to place my hands on each side as if and stand back here where you ride as if I'm going to be riding and we're going to watch my fingers how I'm sliding like an instrument down sliding down and out guys that's the key. I'm holding the other side lightly so i want to keep her a little straight right now so don't just grab one side i want to keep her from falling into me I want to keep her straight with this outside rein so to speak with my right hand keep her straight keep her from stepping in or falling in and i'm just getting her to what start to pay attention to me stroking this because again i want to ride with lightness and i want to teach my horse how to be respond how to respond to lightness so the key thing is teaching you to go down and out and back up. So down, <clears throat> I don't know if the camera can catch this more head on or if I can move her. Let me get her a little bit. Come here, baby girl. So we're facing you a little bit more. So this is, sounds like a very simple technique, but it's a little more complicated because you guys, your eyes need to be trained to catch all the nuances. So look how loose this rein is. I'm gonna just slide my fingers down and out, away from the shoulder, and back up here. Do you see that? But I'm also holding this side. Now, you could let go completely and get your horse to what? Bend to your leg. You can do that too. We're not there yet though. Again, I want you guys to have a horse like Sundance because this is what's gonna keep you safe. So we're not going to get into my number one, it's going to be another video, safety with a bolting horse, how to stop a bolting horse. Wouldn't you like that? Mm -mm -mm. So this is, we're on our way to learning it though. All right, so again, I've got contact tension in my right hand, which is now my outside rein. 
I've got a loose rein in my inside rein, my left hand. I'm going to slide my fingers down. As soon as she feels me pull out with my fingers, light fingers. Good girl, but I still have contact. I'd like her to stay a little straighter. Good girl. Okay, you're going to do that three times on this side. Now let's say she's dull, 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 and won't give. You'll get stronger. Same principle applies in your backup, getting stronger as needed. It will apply here too. So I might wrap my fingers around the rein a little. Do you can see how tight my hand is now? Down, and I'm going to really, I'm going to pull now. I'm going to hold her with the right rein. I'm going to pull until she gives. I might even have to back her up. Believe me, Sundance needed all this in the beginning. Back her up. I might have to just work through this a little bit until this horse at least gives, and then I might release that rein and love on her. Really give her a lot of positive reinforcement for that try, that big try of understanding. The only reason why they don't figure it out immediately is because they're resistant and defensive, you guys. We've taught them that. So be loving, be patient, and be firm, and be consistent. Because you're here to help them learn. That's the key. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. My whip's gonna be in my right hand, which is now my inside. That's just the way we call it. Love you. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have contact and tension in my outside rein, my right, or my left hand now, my outside rein, because she's away from me. Shoulder closest to me will be the inside. Get her straight, good. So just, she's very responsive, so I can just pull on this a little bit. Good girl, baby girl. And now we're gonna do the same thing. Loose rein, start out. Stroke down, out. She already knows <laughs> to you. Stop. But this is what I want you to, your trained eye. I could work with a more difficult horse, you guys. And if I need to, I can do another video. Just let me know. I don't really have anybody here. Oh, I do actually. I do, but we're not going to do it now. You just let me know if you need me to do that video. I can do it next week. But I want to train your eye to how nice it should be and give you, give you an easier way to follow the steps without this horse freaking out. And then you get caught up in watching us go round and around, which you can in circles and circles and circles until this horse gives. Now you may have to do all of that. Another key thing is accept the slightest try. As soon as your horse, if they're tough, as soon as they just bend a little bit, release. That's where pressure and release really works sometimes. Not often. I don't use it very often. But when you're trying to just get this horse to try, it can be amazing. So that's your lateral. You're going to do each side three times in a row because three is the magic number for pattern recognition for creating new habits and new patterns. If you just do it once, it's not enough mental or muscle memory to remember. You gotta do it three times, three times well. So now we have two out of three steps or exercises or techniques. The last one is the vertical. So it's much easier to start out with the backup and then build on that with your side to side lateral flexion. Now we're gonna take that and we're gonna work on just the vertical, just her giving it the vertical. Not a backup yet, just giving it the vertical. So she may, your horse may back up because they're not sure right now, but at least they're responsive to just a little bit of contact around the nose and the pole. That's excellent, I'll reward that. So that's okay if they think that this is a backup and it's not, because all I'm doing is what? Giving this horse some light contact to now go down. I'm not giving her contact to go back. I'm just, and so you need to also tell that to your horse. I'm just asking you to go down right now, break at the pole, get your forehead straight, which is another saying for on the vertical. And I'll show you what that looks like right there, on the vertical. So what that means is if I had a straight line from the ground up, is she straight on the vertical? Yes, she is, or on the bit. That's a little different, but on the vertical. So you wanna, train your eye because you're going to need to train this when you get on. So what you see from this angle is going to be the same as what you see when you ride. So right now I can see that she's relaxed in here from this angle. I need to get her on the vertical. Good. So she breaks at the jaw just like mine. Good. And her nose is straight down. Perpen not perpendicular. 
Perhaps that's the right word. Okay, good, that's good enough. She's on the vertical. And if your horse gets stuck there, see how relaxed her eye is? And they're releasing endorphins. You can always go left, go back to your left and right. Go back to doing this a little faster, a little stronger. Get your horse a little more responsive to quickly bringing up that rein and taking it and your horse responding. So if they get stuck and they just won't get vertical, which a lot of them won't, even though they pass the lateral just fine, you're going to have to go back to the lateral. Go back to the lateral, go back to the back up, make it better. Make it so that it's more responsive. You, don't, you might have to get heavier to get lighter. Sometimes things get worse before they get better. And I call those working through moments where you just got to work it through until the horse understands or the horse stops panicking or the horse tries. We call those moments, I call those moments just working through them. So don't be afraid if you've got to get strong and kind of go there with your horse. And sometimes when you ask for this rein, the horse starts spinning around. Just go with them. Stay in this position and go with them. Let their hindquarters, like Sundance, I'll make it happen. I'll push your hiney around. Go on, babes. Good girl. Because they panic and they'll bend but they will move their feet. And the reason why they move their feet is they're panicking still. Part of them is panicking. So I always say busy feet or busy mouth on a horse is a busy mind. It's a reflection of a busy mind. Whether they're bored, um, fractious, or panicking. So you're still gonna ask for that bend and just stay with the horse and find the right feel and timing when to release. Good girl. So now we've worked on the back up. We've worked on lateral flexion. We've worked on vertical. Come, I'd like a little more responsiveness. Beautiful. And see how she's really able to pick up her front feet when she opens up her top line. Let's see what that looks like when we go to ride. Go to get on. It's going to be really pretty. Come on, babes. So this is absolute foundation work for me. This is stuff I work on on the ground. And then when I go to get on the horse, we further develop it because I don't ask for a horse to get into a frame. I never do unless I'm asking for a backup because I want the horse to be in the best position to be able to back up well and correctly. Other than that, all my other work develops the horse into self carriage and balance so that they can maintain their own frame. So for anybody in the upper levels, which Sundance is a solid two, level two dressage, definitely need to refine our level three. Um, and you're going to get it, Joseph. She's going to be very protective of me when I go to get on. Oh, you get so sticky and sweaty and then your jeans don't move. It doesn't matter how tight or loose they are down here in the summer. It stinks. All right. So. Yes, I want a horse this relaxed, trusting, and obedient. Absolutely, while I get myself positioned on here. <clears throat> so part of my pre-flight that I teach when you go to get on your horse is check everything, just like you do in your car or your motorcycle or your boat or your airplane. You check all your, the mechanics. Jojo, stop. And I got him. Get out of here. <laughs> so... <laughs> That worked really well. So what I want to do is before we ride off, I want to check her vertical flexion, her lateral, and her backup. Yep, that's what I want to check. I want to check the mind. How, we're, how is she on me? Is she relaxed? Because the mindset is we need to take that into our riding, don't we? All right, I don't want her assuming that we're going. Soon they get on, we got to go. Oh my gosh, no. And I want her relaxed and I want her responsive. So the first thing we're going to do is work on just picking that rein up. But remember, I'm holding some contact in the other rein. So I'm just picking that rein up. Good. There's some lateral. Here's some lateral to the left. And she's already on the vertical. So once I have her on the vertical, I'm going to hold my contact. I'm going to hold contact. That means I'm not going to have a loose rein. I'm going to hold it. And if she gets tired, lazy again, and, and too relaxed, I can just do a light left and right. We call this a seesaw. Right, left, pick it up, and I'll jiggle it, pull on it a little bit, as much as I need to get her to loosen that pole again and relax. I would never do that with a bit, and I've seen a lot of 
dressage trainers and reining trainers teaching their students to seesaw with a bit. That is so cruel and painful. Okay, the whole purpose of seesawing right now is just to get her to wiggle her pole so she relaxes it and opens it up so I can get what I need, which is an open, relaxed top line and get her in the correct position to do what? A backup. So see how I'm not pulling on her? I need her to get a little more responsive though. So all I did, and that's a whole nother video, and I also offer this in my mastery membership online teaching courses, how to ask for the backup. All I did was change my body position, my leverage, and sit back. So that's the cue in my work to the backup because I do a lot of upper level dressage. Come, I need you a little bit more. And I can just feel her whole back lift up underneath of me. You need these preparatory steps, you guys, in order to achieve. Even if you're working on upper level reining or dressage right now, just this alone can help tweak or finesse a horse that just is a little tighter, a little more um, resistant mentally, refine your feel and timing. Again, what is a responsive horse? A responsive horse is responding to lightness. So we have to teach this horse how to respond to light and soft contact. And we have to teach you how to teach it. Because I don't want to be here, right? And I don't want a horse that's here. And again, this is steps toward creating safety with a bolting horse. Mm-hmm. Very much so. All right, so real quick, I'm going to ask her to walk off and we're going to we're going to just show how this how, how this looks in a little bit of our riding. I haven't ridden in months, you guys, so it's not going to be really fair to just start doing some walk, trot and canter with her. <clears throat> She remembers everything, but I can feel right now she's a little tight underneath of me. So we're just going to work at a nice walk and in a straight circle while I am asking her to relax and come into contact. So I'm still suppling her vertically right now. I'm not suppling her laterally side to side, but I'm suppling her vertically. And so I'm still communicating with her. I'm still connected. I'm engaged. I'm asking her to keep a, a bigger walk. She gets lazy. She gets stuck. You know, she's a downhill built quarter horse with a big rear end. And it's her muscles. It's easy for horses built like her to get tighter in the hind end. She has thicker muscles. So she's starting to stretch more at this big walk, which is really important. Come on. And she's starting to, good girl, that's what I want. The nose down, really open that top line. So she's starting to feel a lot better, you guys. Her walk, if you can notice, is a lot longer and has more rhythm to it. It's not short. It's a longer stride. It's not a short stride in the hind end. Really important. The walk is so underdeveloped and underrated, not overrated. It's just nobody spends a lot of time in America in training with the walk and how important the walk is. How important it is as a building and foundation to better trot and especially the canter. Good girl. So see, I can start feeling her shoulder open up more. You can start seeing her swing more, you guys. I can feel it and I can see it. So this is what you're wor I'm working towards. I want this level of relaxation and her being able to stretch more and come up underneath herself because that's going to help her get into a, her own frame and carriage when I ask for a um, bigger movement, so to speak, where she needs more balance. So these are all good building blocks. All right, that's enough for today. Let's see how... Yep, good. Let's just relax when you back up. Good girl. Come. And I can do a little bit of the bump in raining. Come. Good. Come. Good. Good girl. Thank you. I look forward to comments. May you always be one with your horse. Good.